Hi Wanderers! Welcome back to today's video. My name's Hannah. I'm gonna be talking about some geology with you guys today. I wanted to do kind of like a spotlight video. This is pyrite. This is one of the coolest minerals for sure. It's got some really interesting geologic properties and it's got some really interesting history to it as well. So let's get right into it. Do, do, do. All right, so I've got a couple of different specimens of pyrite here for us to look at and enjoy. The chemical formula for pyrite is FES2. It is a sulfide mineral. This isn't a group of minerals that's very large, but pyrite is a fairly abundant and well-known mineral for the sulfide family. And as you can see, there are a couple of different ways it can look when it grows, when it forms, I should say. It generally, the crystal habit of pyrite is cubic, but it can often form these octahedral shapes as well. And it can also grow alongside other minerals, somewhat commonly with quartz, also with chalcopyrite, which is what I'm assuming this bronzy stuff is. Pyrite is a super beautiful mineral. It's really, really shiny. It's got a metallic to glistening luster. And it sits at about a 6 to a 6.5 on Mohs hardness scale. There are a couple of things that are really interesting about pyrite. I'm super excited to tell you guys about it. So, the history of the name of pyrite is that it actually like sparks when it's hit against other metals. So if you'll, if you're familiar with Latin and Greek roots and stuff, you'll probably notice that pyro is usually used with fire. They named it pyrite because it actually is how early humans made fire because they would use the sparks from pyrite from hitting it to create flame which is pretty cool. The second most interesting thing about pyrite, in my opinion, is that it can, the formation of pyrite can be somewhat mediated by microorganisms. So it, it's possible, it's not always, but it can be encouraged to grow by microorganisms in the water. How this happens is the, Iron sulfide will be kind of floating, or like the FES, so iron and sulfur, they'll be bonded together and just floating in the water. And in order to make pyrite, as we just barely saw, in order to make pyrite, it needs to have two, one iron and two sulfur. So when microorganisms are hanging out in the water and just this is available, but then there's sulfur, kind of some extraneous sulfur that's bonded to hydrogen. Microorganisms will eat the hydrogen away from the other sulfur, freeing that sulfur atom to bond with this little piece, thus creating the pyrite formula. So that I think is really, really interesting. It's not always a biological process, but it can be mediated is the, is the term by, by, by microorganisms, which I think is just, so cool about pyrite. When I say it sits at a 6 to a 6.5 on Mohs hardness, what I mean by that, if you've seen our video on the Mohs hardness scale, is that it can scratch glass and a steel nail will be able to scratch pyrite, but you won't be able to scratch pyrite with your fingernail, with copper, or with... Don't think... Good. You should be able to use like a pocket knife or scissors or whatever else you have laying around. Essentially, it can be scratched by metal, but not really much else. I've got a little tool here. I found this fancy tool that is graded to be a six on most hardness scale. So I thought we could look together. Oh, this isn't wanting to focus very well. I thought we could look together at the hardness. It's not wanting to focus here. I'm not super sure. All right, I guess I'll just have to hold it out back here. I'm 
Let's find a good spot to scratch this at. I think that surface was a bit too uneven to see the... Hmm. It's not wanting to scratch. This might be sitting on a 6.5, honestly, which pirate can be. It's not wanting to scratch with the six. Let's try it with the seven. There we go. There we go. Just a little scratch there. Another f interesting thing about pyrite that is diagnostic is a streak test. Pyrite has got a streak that is the, a greenish black to a brownish black color. Um, it's going to be a really dark streak. So let's take a look. So you can see there that that's a really dark streak. So if we didn't know what this mineral was, there's a couple processes we could go through to identify it, which is the crystal habit. It is cubic and octahedral. It's got an uneven fracture down here. It is brassy in color. It's got a metallic luster. It isn't really wanting to scratch at a six. So that means it must be a 6.5. Aside from scratching the mineral itself, another diagnostic aspect of pyrite is that it will scratch glass. There you can see that really clearly. That is what I just made. So pyrite is a really, really cool mineral. There's a lot of really awesome things about it. Question that I hear a lot is how do we distinguish pyrite from gold? Gold, boop. Gold is an elemental mineral. It's a, it is on the transition metal area of the periodic table. And gold can be somewhat similar to pyrite. It can have a similar luster. It can have a similar color and it can have a similar weight to it. They're both like quite heavy in your hand. But gold is, a lot softer than pyrite. As you can see, I had a pretty tough time scratching pyrite with these tools. The pyrite can scratch the glass. So pyrite's a really, really hard mineral. It's higher up on the most hardness scale than gold is. Gold sits at about 2.5. So you should be able to scratch gold just with your fingernails. It's that soft. That is a really good way to distinguish gold from pyrite is just how soft it is. Another thing is just, you can see that there's a really intense shape that pyrite has. It's extremely eye-catching. It's really unmistakable. It's a bit hard to miss. Now, gold doesn't really like to do this. Gold, if you notice, like when you see gold, it's usually a lot more nuggety than crystally, crystalline. Generally speaking, you'll be able to tell pyrite from gold based on the shape of the crystals, the hardness of the material, and one last thing, if you're not sure if you've done those couple of things, is if you have a streak plate like this, which is unglazed ceramic, gold will not have a dark color like this. Gold will actually maintain the gold color in the streak. It will have a yellowy to brassy gold color when you streak test it. So those are three things that you can do to distinguish gold from pyrite. Um, don't be fooled by pyrite when you're looking for gold. It did fool a lot of people in the early days, which is why pyrite was kind of somewhat cruelly named fool's gold, because it got a lot of people. So if you're not sure, that's totally okay. A lot of people haven't been in the past. So you can now try those three things, the hardness, the streak, and the shape of the crystals to determine if it is pyrite or if it's gold. Thanks so much, guys. We'll see you next time.